uh, I'm an archaeologist, as Perky mentioned, and um, uh, let me ask first, are there any attorneys in, any lawyers here? Yeah. No? Okay. Because I, actually I was hoping there would be because I kind of need some help with some of the, some of the terminology. And I just, obviously I am not a lawyer, I'm, and I'm, but I'm talking about legal issues. And another thing that I'm not is a cemetery expert. Uh, really, generally archaeologists don't dig in cemetery. Generally, it's been my experience to uh, basically stay away from uh, cemeteries. And so w with this uh, project, I was wondering if we're not going to dig, what am I going to do, basically? So uh, I kind of, my role has been to be involved in the uh, preservation aspects of it. And I should say that I'm learning about all this. And so it's been a little over a year. So everything that I'm saying is just, uh, it's, it's all very new to me. Uh, and what I'm going to do today, though, is focus on uh, the legal aspects that protect cemeteries. And there's a lot of other things in the laws, but I'm going to mainly focus on uh, protection. And first I was thinking, well, uh, what about the federal cemetery laws? Are there any? Is there a, you know, a National Cemetery Act? And it turns out there isn't. There's really no specific law that's, that uh, protects cemeteries, marks cemeteries on federal property. Um, okay, well then what do the federal people do? Uh, what does the National Forest do? And so I figured, well, I'll just call an archaeologist up who uh, works with the National Forest. John Ippolito is a uh, forest, National Forest archaeologist, and he's based in Lufkin. And I asked him, well, what, you know, what do you all do? Is there, so I know there's cemeteries in the National Forest, and uh, what sort of uh, laws uh, pertain to those? And he said, uh, he first kind of hedged, and he said, well, it's a little bit of a gray area. And then he said, normally what a national forest would do would be to follow the laws in the particular state that they're located. And so basically what, uh, what they do is follow the Texas cemetery laws. And one thing uh, that he also managed, he said, or said that they had some protocols themselves, uh, the Forest Service, and uh, generally, it, 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 it's not even general, it's, it's one of their rules, they, that they will not establish any new cemeteries in the national forest. That's just uh, one of their things. And also, of the existing cemeteries in, in national forest lands, it's uh, basically they won't expand any of them. So in a sense, it's, uh, and then he went on to say that they try to avoid acquiring cemeteries. It's something, uh, it, it is, it's a lot of work managing them. And so, uh, and you probably know the Forest Service, a lot of times what they try to do is consolidate their holdings, so they'll do land exchanges, trying to sort of, uh, uh, if, if you look at some of the maps, the forest holdings, it looks like a checkerboard. They've got a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, and so over the years, again, this has been going on for quite some time, they, they try to exchange land and sort of consolidate, uh, And but when they do these land exchanges, they do not want to accept cemeteries. That's one of those things. Uh, it's mainly as a management issue, so they, they just try to avoid that. But some cases, uh, there's, they can't avoid it, or in, in the past when the forests were set up, it just involved buying properties that had cemeteries. And so uh, there are, again, a number of uh, cemeteries in the National Forest. And uh, John was e estimating that of where, they, where the National Forest has holdings, they only uh, have about 10% of the cemeteries. He, he guessed that, that probably about 90% of the cemeteries are in private property or other ownership. So in general, it seems like the federal uh, idea was you know, try to avoid uh, uh, having to deal with cemeteries, essentially. Um, but there's other laws, actually, and again, they're not specific to cemeteries, but um, as uh, cemeteries essentially are archeological resources. And there are some very tough federal laws that do protect archaeological resources on federal property. Now, the first one, actually, this, there's been a long, again, it's been all, all throughout the 20th century, there's been attempts, uh, basically, to, to protect uh, archaeological resources. The first, it started in 1906 with the Antiquities Act. And essentially, this was a reaction to what was going on in the Southwest. There was a lot of uh, looting and treasure hunting of particularly American Indian burials. And, People, they didn't care about the burial, they wanted the, the, the pottery that was uh, buried with the individual. And it was just, uh, uh, they, 
basically there was, uh, it kind of prompted the, the forming of this, uh, this act, but it was more of a statement of the spirit of the law kind of thing. There really wasn't much in the way of enforcement and much of the way of penalties and teeth, so to speak. And it wasn't until 1997 with the Archaeological Resource Protection Act that you really have a robust law that does protect archaeological resources. And uh, so basically, um, and it's interesting though, there was certain, uh, uh, in 1990, again, before the Resource Protection Act, a Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, I should have put this, this is NAGPRA. If any, uh, and this is something that uh, everyone basically should probably know about, but uh, anyway, it, it's, but it is specific to American Indian graves. Uh, and it's, there was such a, again, the Antiquities, and the Antiquities Act also really was more concerned with American Indian graves. Uh, that was, that's what prompted it. And also, and again, so basically, it took almost 100 years, but in 1990, there was a protection act. Native American Graves Protection and, re and it also, not only protection, but it adds repatriation, saying that anything that was taken out of these graves, if they were located on federal property, or if the institution that took those remains gets federal money, then basically the law says that uh, the tribes have to have the opportunity to take the material back. And this is, uh, we've had some experience with this here at SFA, <coughs> there was a, uh, uh, at a burial mound right here in town that was excavated. It's on private property, but since the material, the, both the human remains and all the pottery vessels were being held at SFA and SFA gets federal money, then NAGPRA applied. And we basically just finished our, uh, our notification and uh, essentially it's the, the Caddo Indians are who uh, we dealt with. And uh, if, when the Caddo are ready, all the material will be uh, given back to the Caddo. But the, the point here, though, is that on federal property, uh, cemeteries as an archaeological resource are protected. And these, these laws are, are very, I, I just want to say, too, especially the Archaeological Resource Protection Act, uh, basically anything over $500 worth of damage to a cemetery is considered a felony. And the way that's determined is basically if Let's just say if you go out and you dig a few little holes, uh, well, if it were on, you know, to the damage might not be that great if it wasn't an archaeological site or a cemetery. Uh, might be, you know, maybe 20 bucks if it was some material and hire someone just to fill them back up again. Uh, but on an archaeological site, uh, the way damage is assessed is that you basically, again, you, you would have to uh, determine, uh, let's say there was five holes, five small holes that were dug. The damage would be assessed by saying, okay, how much would it cost to pay an archaeologist to come in here and dig it properly? And with five holes, you'll be way over $500. And so it's going to be a felony. And there's a big difference, and that's why I, said, I wish there was a lawyer here. There's a big difference between a misdemeanor and a felony. Felonies are uh, serious stuff. It's jail time. It's big fines. It's confiscating of your equipment, your, your truck, all this kind of stuff. And... Uh, even people who are uh, uh, helping you out, they can get in trouble too. So it's, uh, these, are, these federal laws are very robust in, term, in terms of protecting uh, the resource. So essentially in the national forest, any federal land in the state of Texas, uh, the cemeteries there are very well protected. Now we get to this, the Texas cemetery laws. And basically, it's, again, there is no uh, Texas Cemetery Protection Act. There's just... Uh, all these laws are in the Texas Health and Safety Code. And essentially, a lot of them are, are related to, uh, like just as it says, health things, of taking care of in, uh, interred bodies and that sort of stuff. And uh, it's all, I gave you the, uh, all you need to do is Google Texas Health and Safety Code, and it'll show up in chapter 694 to 716. And there's a whole bunch of stuff related to cemeteries. And right now, as far as any enforcement, uh, there's the, the penal code. 2803 and uh, criminal mischief and essentially damage to property. And this is uh, basically so any enforcement issues would be, uh, would be located there. Um, as Perthy mentioned, the Texas Historical Commission has just been outstanding in the way they've dealt with uh, cemeteries in this state. They've got this uh, publication here. It's actually, it's online, um, Preserving Historic Cemeteries. It's just a, a, a wonderful document. Uh, 
uh, talks about all the things Berkey was talking about, and it also summarizes the, the Texas uh, cemetery laws here. And again, that's, that's online. Uh, Darren Height, he's the man. He's the cemetery man in, uh, in Texas, basically. He works for the Texas Historical Commission. Uh, he came up here, uh, uh, it was, I guess, last uh, May, and uh, uh, he gave a talk. A much, actually, I wish, uh, let's see, someone, yes, Maxine was there, right, and when Darren came. And he gave a wonderful talk about the, um, the laws, basically the Texas cemetery laws. And then he also kind of, uh, this, here he is at Oak Grove Cemetery, and was basically uh, telling people how to record cemeteries. There's a nice little form that they have that's online. And uh, so it was really a, a good workshop. But he's, he's in charge of the, the, all right, the RIP program. And uh, if any questions about cemeteries, Garen Height is, is your man. And something that was kind of interesting that just happened recently. Uh, this was this amendments to some of these Texas cemetery laws. And they really do, it's interesting, Garen didn't, he mentioned them, but he really was very low key about it. It was kind of, uh, because they were still going through uh, the process, basically. Uh, they were finally signed in uh, last summer, June 19th, and they be became effective uh, in the fall, September 1st. And what I'm gonna do, actually, and there was a couple of things in here that were uh, very important. Um, and I'm, but I'm, uh, I'm gonna kinda just go through all the sort of certain little pertinent issues or pertinent areas of the uh, Texas Cemetery Law, and I'll mention the ones that were, the, uh, that were new last year. Uh, definition's very important. What is a cemetery? Essentially, a cemetery is a place containing one or more graves. Okay, what is a grave? A grave, space of ground that contains interred human remains. So as, as Perky said, these are not pet cemeteries. It is, it, it, it's very clearly uh, defined that uh, when you're talking about a cemetery and graves in the, in the laws here, it, it, uh, you are referring to human, uh, humans, human beings. And uh, the one thing that's also interesting, and, and as an archeologist, I picked it up kind of right away, is that it doesn't say that it has to be a marked cemetery. It doesn't say that the cemetery has to have a tombstone. All it says is that just a human being has to be there. And this is very important. Uh, it, it's kind of, I mean, it can be, basically, you could go out to place and maybe, there, and a lot, of, a lot of times this happens. Uh, sometimes the cemeteries aren't marked very well to begin with. Uh, and the markers, maybe it's just a stone and they get moved. Uh, American Indian uh, cemeteries are, a lot of them aren't marked at all, essentially. And if they are, it might be in mound, burial mound. So, uh, anyway, this is very important, uh, as far as uh, legally anyway. And again, just that one, a single interment can be a cemetery. And this is, this is actually, this isn't new, but I think a lot of people aren't aware of this. You can't own a cemetery. You, you can't own, you can't physically own human remains, is essentially what it, what it boils down to. Um, the, uh, and basically, the idea here is that the, uh, the, the, the individuals that are interred in the ground are essentially held in trust by the state of Texas for the benefit of the descendants of the person that's buried there. So it's, it's almost, and I, I've kind of talked about this a couple times, and somebody came up afterwards and say, oh, so what happens as soon as you're buried, the, the state owns you, is that right? And well, there's, essentially that's it. Once, uh, once you're put in the ground, uh, it, it, uh, you are held in trust uh, by the state of Texas. And actually, uh, and let's see, one other thing here. Yes, the, the property around it, of course, can, can be privately owned. Um, but that, that property owner, again, according to these uh, laws, has to allow reasonable access to anyone wanting to visit the cemetery. Now, this is something, this isn't new, and I'm not sure uh, this surprised me, actually. I, I thought, you know, it just seemed a little, uh, th to have a law like this. But anyway, this is, that's, that's the way it reads. And, of course, reasonable access is, is, is the key here. And that's where, again, you come into interpretation. It's, uh, it's like, if, if, say, there is a, a, a family cemetery that's uh, it's no longer being owned by the family, but some of the descendants would like to visit it, and it might be out in the middle of a pasture or something and not very accessible, well, the landowner isn't required to build a road so that people can come in. You know, that's it. But uh, in terms of just being being around to sort of help if, if someone wants to visit, uh, just sort of show them where it is and help them get out there, kind of thing. And 
And of course, not any time of the day or night. And again, it has to be a reasonable time set by both, uh, or agreed to by both, essentially, the, uh, the landowner and the person wanting to visit. So, um, but anyway, that is, uh, that is part of the law. And this, now this is something that's new. Uh, and I should, I should, well, point out, I guess, anyway, basically it just says that any, uh, for city cemeteries, any cemeteries within the city limits are the responsibility, if it's a municipal cemetery, it's the responsibility of the city to keep it up. And that's, that's new. Now this was motivated actually by, uh, it was a, uh, a state congressperson, uh, uh, state representative uh, from Austin, and essentially the motivation here was there was, I guess, a number of uh, uh, cemeteries within the city limits of Austin that were not being taken care of, and the city wasn't doing it. And so basically this, this uh, representative said, you know, that, that's just not right. And as part of these amendments, uh, she put it in there that, that the city has to take care of them. It's, now it's the law. Starting September 1st, as of September 1st, uh, this, is, uh, this is the law. And I should mention too, um, there was obviously, anytime there's amendments to, uh, to existing legislation, there's usually a, a, some sort of a motivation or some sort of uh, thing that why people are doing this. Now the reason, uh, the whole upkeep issue, it was, I'd like to say, it, it definitely was related to the cemeteries within the city limits in Austin. Now the whole idea of uh, identifying or uh, uh, defining a cemetery as a single grave doesn't necessarily have to be marked. This sort of was uh, motivated by uh, something that happened in Waco at the um, Texas Ranger Museum. They were expanding the museum, they were doing some construction, and they hit, uh, they didn't think anyone was there, but they hit a, uh, the, a graveyard where a number of Texas Rangers were buried. And it's, there was this big uproar. And apparently they didn't, do, the, con the, the people doing the construction didn't do anything illegal. And so, well, do we stop them? It's not, we don't have any legal basis to, to stop them. And so that sort of said, look, marked or not, we have to protect uh, human burials. We have to protect graves. And so that's why it's, it's one of those little things that uh, it wasn't, I should say, it wasn't the archeologists who were, who were pushing for getting uh, what's called an unmarked burial law. And uh, that's what I'm gonna kind of get to now because they've been trying to for years in Texas trying to protect burials on private property that were not marked. Are there any provisions for moving? Yes, there are. Yes, there's a whole bunch of, yes. And, and there's uh, essentially, uh, and I'll get, I was gonna get that at the end, but you're right, there are, there are. Uh, but this whole thing of, it's uh, Perky talked about the vernacular, oh gosh, of uh, um, what was, what's, what's considered, how do people call certain areas? like? Uh, cemetery is, is what you consider now, but when, if you're talking about American Indians, they were never, they were just, they weren't called cemeteries. It was like, oh, that's the burial ground, or that's the burial mound or something, but it wasn't considered a cemetery. And so none of the cemetery laws <laughs> really apply to these. And uh, are they cemeteries? Well, they are now, basically, <laughs> in Texas. And this is very important, and because mainly, uh, in Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, uh, it's been years. They've, they've had what they've called unmarked burial laws. They realized that it was important to protect, didn't matter who it was, any human being buried in the ground in, the, in these particular states are protected by these laws. And Texas had not, the archeologists have been trying for the last 12, 12 some odd years to try to get an unmarked burial law and had been failing. And mainly part of it was like, I know in Louisiana, the reason why it succeeded it wasn't the archeologists who were saying, we need an unmarked burial law. It was people, I guess you would say, uh, church people, like uh, ministers, pastors, they were saying, out of moral grounds, it's just not right that uh, you know, we, we have to protect any human being. If they're buried on private property, they should be protected. And so it was sort of a moral basis. They were trying all these years in Texas to have more of a scientific basis, saying, oh, these, these areas should be protected so we can you know, the archeologists can learn more about them. And that just wasn't working. And it, it turned out in Texas, ultimately, it was moral grounds, I think, that, that got this. Now, they don't call it an unmarked burial law, but essentially that's, that's what it does. It does protect uh, unmarked burials on private property. And it was sort of a moral outrage that you, know, you, could, you could actually dig someone up and it, was, you know, it, that it, it, it was legal kind of thing. It had to be the Texas Rangers. But anyway, um, 
I can say. So this is, uh, it's, it's interesting, this whole thing is, uh, um, uh, uh, well, okay, what, so what does it mean? Well now, we have uh, American Indian cemeteries, essentially, in, in the state of Texas. There's, uh, and one of them is our, our partners with the Preserve America program. This is uh, Cattle Mounds here. This is a cemetery. And there's also one here in town at Washington Square. It's right across the street from the uh, TJR Elementary School. And so these, indeed, are cemeteries. Um, so basically, just to conclude, there uh, now, we couldn't say this a year ago, but now we can say that all human burials in Texas are now protected. Whether it's on federal land, we have the, the very strong <coughs> archeological protection laws, and now, in, now the state laws also uh, protect all, all cemeteries in Texas are protected. Um, and you mentioned moving. Uh, you can, it's legal, there's all, if you go to the, uh, uh, there's a number of provisions for what you have to do. Uh, first you mentioned you do, you got it for, if it's a, over a certain age, you need to get an archeologist and essentially it almost becomes an archeological excavation. So it is kind of expensive actually to, to move a cemetery. And we did get a, a call from, a, it was a cemetery that was just um, being, it was in a, uh, uh, it was out of the, the, the descendants no longer owned the property and it was just not being kept up, and they, they wanted, they, basically they wanted to move it. They said, Let's, we want to get our people away from there and put them somewhere else. And, uh, but they knew there was some unmarked graves in there. They, there was this, a story that during the Civil War, a number of uh, soldiers had died. Uh, they were, I don't know if they were in the hospital or being transported or whatever, but they were died and they were buried there, but their graves weren't marked. And so they, that's why they called us, said, well, you can do some archeology span and find these, these you know, I think they were Confederate soldiers that had died. And, uh, I, uh, so I thought, okay, and the first thing I did was uh, send an email to Garen Height, and he was very, you know, he kind of gave a very standard response. I said, well, okay, there are, there's a, a number of things you can do if you want to move it, but we don't, we really would encourage you to try to preserve it in place. And ultimately, that's what the family decided to do. I think the more they thought about it, uh, the place became very important. That, and so now they're, they're focusing on, on fixing up uh, uh, the place. But uh, again, that's very brief.